Dwarven Moss presents a Dungeons and Dragons actual play of The Curse of Straw. <laughs> Left the Vistani camp with Stanimir. Yeah, you spoke to Stanimir. He said he would, uh, ex- you know, he would he give said us he the would bones. Give you the bones if you Saint Andrel. Yeah. If we returned the missing child. child. Yeah. You know that half of them are split up. Yep. It's, half. A, it's a smaller encampment at this point. And they said that they were going to Lake Zarovich. Mm-hmm. You also have uh, a bunch of ravens with you. We got a bunch of ravens with us. Mm. That they said they would pretty much do anything for you. Yeah, That's right. Get them to look at Zorovich. They or we could sneak around, the around uh, camp. this campsite. Maybe that was just a diversion to get us away from there or something. Maybe. Pretty sneaky. But now, if this is the entry point for us, we walked through the city gates. To enjoy the festival of the blazing sun. Yeah. That we were told was mandatory by all women, men, and children. Yeah, that's right. The guards were happy to see you back in time. That's right. I believe you had uh, an hour or so before the festival starts. That's right. Um, You're coming in the the west end, closer to where the church is. And Wendell, you you are itching. You are not feeling good. The burden of your axe... Uh, is weighing very heavily on you at the moment. Okay. So we're walking in uh, from the west side. Yep, there's a few people, uh, kids. It looks like they're starting to come out of their houses and get ready for the festival, head into the town square. Okay. Uh, Wendell's just kind of pacing forward, walking back and forth a bit, and uh, sort of just pacing, pacing. He's just going around. He's walking ahead of Boren a little bit. You have to. You feel an itch. Yeah, I know. I get, I'm feeling. I'm feeling an itch. I, I'm I, hopefully born notices this. Oh yeah. He. Who you? How you feeling? Yeah. Well, why do you think I'm feeling born? Yeah. I, I'm just kind of like yeah. yeah oh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Please. Yeah. I'm trying to help. Yeah, uh, let me help uh, you. Maybe we can go hunting or something. Oh, this is there's some laughs. Happy festival, yeah. happy festival, young man. Yeah, happy festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's born. Maybe there's a cow or something. A cow would be Might really be a cow good. Somewhere. Or a sheep. Oh, a sheep, sure. That's yeah. right. That's a, right. a nice big hunk of life form that I could just drive this axe into. And that does it, eh? All right. Oh, oh yeah. It's what about all about a worm? What? Maybe we could just find a worm. A worm? Or like a bug or something. No, no, no. Can it be fulfilled with a bug? No, it, it has to take something. Right. I gotta take life. Right. Got to take blood. So Borin looks around. We're at the entranceway of this, of this mm-hmm. town. So I'm sure there's no... What is there? Is there a cat? Is there a dog? Is there a bird? You, <laughs> you do see a feral cat down, uh, down an alleyway. Oh, right. I, okay. oh God. I look over my left shoulder. Wendell's still pacing around. I can't believe we're going to do this, Wendell. What? This way. Follow me. All right. We kind of slink between the alleyway while people are still, I assume, going by to the festival, going to the town square. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah, it's pretty busy. Okay, so we're sort of sneaking by. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, come here. Oh. Go for uh, animal handling. <laughs> so you can see a roll for that. Eleven. Here, kitty, here. Meow. Here. Come here, oh, that's a great cat. That's it's, yeah, that's it, it runs back as you try to get close. Oh, I it runs it. back? It runs away from you. Oh, okay, okay. Ah, you almost had it. Look, I, I can't believe it. Yeah, I'm you get a few steps already. closer, and then it gets startled, and it moves further away. Stop Not boys. completely running away, but... You're staring it away. Oh, so, you know what? Let I'll me try, leave. let me try, let me I'll try. Leave. I'll leave. Oh, God. Boron kind of slowly makes his way towards... The end of the alley, near the streetway. It's looking so through like a like a barrel. It's rubbing its side against a barrel, kind of watching you guys. Boren's turned his back and is watching the street now. He's, okay, you're kind of you're blocking things off a little uh, bit. So yeah, so he Wendell's, doesn't see what Wendell's doing. He's going. I can't believe I'm okay. leading this man to kill. Roll an animal girl. handling on this kitty. So not. That is not. Oh my bloody hell! Uh-oh. Good Lord Almighty! 
That's a 19. As you put out your hand and kind of give it a... And you're down a little bit, you're crouching. It, it does get very close to you within grasp. All right. I'm going to uh, pick it up by that sort of, uh, like, behind its shoulders sort of thing, like on its neck, and hold it up. Mm -hmm. Like a mother with her kittens? Yeah. The scruff of the yeah. neck type thing? I'm going to hold it up and put my, uh, with my left hand, and then put my right hand on its uh, belly underneath it a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to conjure uh, a dagger as quickly as possible to form pretty much right right into it, into the center of, of the of the cat. Like a wolverine type thing? Yeah, like a wolverine <laughs> type thing. <laughs> Remember this is to, yeah, okay. The dagger comes out and it falls dead. Uh, the sound of the people gathering for the festival and nobody seems to hear it. And, I sort uh, of kick it to the side a little bit. Pull Bordin, some Bordin turns around debris and it, on it or whatever. It, I, is, is it's that done? driftwood, just put it over it. Is it done? You're right. I look down at and I look down at my axe. In a very small amount of blood, but blood, and you do feel relief. Born. Hey, can we go? My axe is fucked up. I don't feel good about it, Born, but yeah, I feel a lot I. better about getting rid of a stray cat that was a little violent. All right. Well, you know, I could have scratched you're... a kid. What if I lose control and I start going? Nuts during the festival. Well, who no? Maybe your curse is wearing off. I don't think it's wearing off, more. How do you know? Because I just murdered a cat and right. blood just appeared on this axe. I do not and wish not this evil to be put upon anyone, cat or otherwise. All right. I feel like we should check out this town square. Yeah, we take a look at the people going by and sort of just feel the slight breeze of their motion going by and yeah a lot of them are holding flowers some of the flowers are wilted maybe not even alive and they're kind of making this procession towards the town square hey born hey. remember when we were out here when we were flying Dude, we were flying born that was so cool we were out there flying god and born grabs wendell by the hips and he goes oh my god i can't believe that was so fun <laughs> The festival's so, starting. All right. I see we go down there, finish the festival, make sure the Baron sees us. So we've got an alibi. Uh, yeah, good idea. Okay. Oh, all right, so we make our way down towards the main road. Yep, you walk out to the street. we start hearing that music getting closer and closer. And oh, yeah. We see the crowd. Uh, as the sun is starting to set, it's kind of setting the stage for this festival to commence. Um, I guess the idea is to light the sun and fight the night. All sort of symbolism there. Okay. I guess we're going to light this wicker sun hey, to uh, seems like sort of celebrate still holding on to some light. It's their own version of daylight savings, I guess. Hey, that's right. Seems like a big celebration. Yeah, a big fuck you to nighttime. Hello! Happy <coughs> festival, everyone! You don't think these people are against having a little dwarven moss out? It's very positive, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Excuse me, madam. Hello. Do you mind if we light some dwarven moss? Oh, no, please. Oh, thank you. I guess your culture is accepting of it. Hey, we're at a concert. Let's have some fun. Hey, absolutely. Oh, wow. This place is pretty cool. See? Even that lady over there knew what dwarven moss was. I told you. Wow. Well, there are many different strains. This particular one is called dwarven moss. They, they grow it in the sunlight, and it helps you more with a positive attitude. Sure. I think they have more of like a Barovian shrub here, but it's the same. They Barovian know. shrub? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's what that is, right? Uh, do, you, do you have a dealer that I could speak to? Perhaps we could trade. Uh, we can exchange uh, information afterwards. Oh, great. I'll be sure to find you. Thank oh, you. Oh, oh. And she's kind of looking oh, up. Oh, sorry, sorry. And the Baron is gathering himself up the stage. And you actually see some children dressed as in costume as flowers and some sorry-looking men as they're holding this rope about to lift up this 10-foot uh, wicker sun orb type thing. And the burgomaster is going, 
Welcome, welcome, welcome to the moment we've all been waiting for. Welcome to the Festival of the Blazing Sun. <laughs> oh, you guys. <laughs> guys. Well, thank you so much for being here. And he does like, or his face changes. And he's like doing a very strict count of who is actually here. And he sees you guys. And he goes, oh, how's it going? Yeah. Borden gives him a big double thumbs up. Gives you a knowing look. And that, he actually smiles a little extra that, that he sees you guys are here. And Wendell smiles back, but with a bit of a, it's a bit of a shit-eating grin. <laughs> and Borden pokes Wendell in the side. Well, without further ado. And then he reaches over and he pinches it on his bum. Pinches, gives a little Wendell a little pinch hey. on the bum. <laughs> oh, stop it, stop it. Happy <laughs> festival. <laughs> <laughs> So the burgermaster is up there. He's smiling. He's right beside his uh, wife. His wife is holding a kind of uh, sad bouquet, actually, of wilting flowers. And um, not the best looking set of flowers he gave his wife. <laughs> no, but uh, they finally host this thing up about up into the air, finally before everyone. And um, but right before the uh, the wicker sun can be set ablaze, all of a sudden the sky kind of tears open. Uh, a sudden downpour, oh. and the burgermaster wicks a, a few uh, beads off of his uh, shoulders and goes, <laughs> "All will be well." So he brandishes this sputtering yeah. torch and marches defiantly through the rain toward the wicker ball, only to have his torch go out as he thrusts it into the sphere. And as he does that. A singular laugh erupts from the crowd, drawing the burgomaster's fiery gaze, as well as gasps from the townsfolk. <gasps> Silence besets the square for a moment. Yeah, Wendell's looking around, or looking at this very confused as the rain is making his long hair and beard sop against his face. Yeah, Boren's kind of catching the vibe of everything. And he's just kind of like... He says in a bit of a louder voice, Rain shall not stop us! The celebration shall continue! And a few, few people go... Yeah. Yeah. It's like a <laughs> smattering of like golf clapping. Yeah. Wendell nervously claps along. Golf clapping. Kind of spattering, smattering of clouds. We shall celebrate the brightness of the sun, even though the clouds shall shelter us only for a moment. Barn. And I for lean, the festival! I lean down and I, and I say into his ear, I'm a little worried about that singular laughter that I heard coming from the, cl the crowd. Don't worry as long as we keep these people preoccupied. Okay, just don't draw any undue attention to us. Uh, all right. And while all this is going, you see coming out of the sides of this wicker ball, this smoke and it rises and it forms a cloud which kind of makes it sway all up to the scaffold where this ball hangs and on the scaffold the spectral human form takes shape you see a lean muscular looking figure wearing a cloak dressed in an exquisite albeit somewhat outdated fashion the figure lowers his hood, revealing a man who appears to be in his early 30s, sporting a jet black haircut swept back from his face, which is dark, revealing liquid eyes. The crowd screams in terror. Chaos immediately erupts. They know this man to be strong who says, as he lords over you guys, in a booming voice, I uh, hope I didn't rain on your parade. And just as he says this, Strahd slashes down from the scaffolding, splitting the rope, causing the wicker ball to fall and come crashing down. It breaks open, and all of a sudden... No. No. Seven swarms of bats spurt out of this ball. What? And you see four of these vampire spawns 
they kind of curl out and fall onto the ground. Just like Dora with these red glowing eyes. They start to get up and they unleash themselves onto the crowd. There's, you know, several hundred people, but these are commoners. Commoners have one, four hit points. And you know what, you know what the vampire spawn are like. So people are getting decimated right now. The entire village before your eyes, and it's happening quickly. Uh, since Strahd does have surprise on you, the first thing he does as he's standing above the scaffolding is he gestures his hand towards the tall gray statue. And as he does that, the figure starts to animate. And you see rock crumbling from him. He comes to life, grabbing a couple people. Oh my god. Ripping their limbs apart. Oh my and god. Corin! No! Strahd is playing this thing like a marionette as it's tearing apart the townsfolk. We've got to stop this man! Uh, Horan starts shit. to do this. He starts to elbow his way through the crowd as all these people are yelling and trying. He tries to come Ooh, out, out of my way. Oh, oh, and Wendland instinctively out follows him through I'm the crowd out. through a. Oh, and he kind of wake. sidles up to right at the front and center where you can see Isaac and you can see the Baron Here we go, right staring right, yeah. down. Strong! Stop your ways! We don't need any more innocents <laughs> killed! <laughs> What is this, Strahd? What's it all for? We're here. You brought us here, right? Well, now that you're here, let's see what you've got. It's good to finally be in the Verlaki. It's a nice uh, city you have here, uh, Baron Vargas. And he looks down at the Baron. <laughs> and as he says that, he points his hand at the Baron. And a flaming fireball comes out of his hand. Ooh. The Baron takes the, bar the Baron takes 40 plus damage. He's completely burned into nothing. Oh Chris, my his God. his wife is screaming. Oh my God. Isaac is overcome with anger, and uh, as a wow. and as a reaction. Isaac starts to fume. Flame comes from his giant right hand and he hurls it. You guys have never seen this before. And it hits Strahd. It's a bit of his uh, cloak catches a fire. Right next to him is the smoldering ashes of the Baron as the wife runs for her safety. Oh shit. Oh, Wendell takes a couple steps back and he looks and he looks over at the, at the statue behind him across the crowd of people. Is, is it still like down on ground level and uh, and swinging around and killing people? It stepped off, killed several more people. It's actually stopped right now. It stopped? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so while that's happening, Quorum goes, good boy, Isaac, follow me. And he shoves his way over to this thing. And he fucking looks at it. It's stopped right now. What what is this thing? What is, what can he surmise that as he it's looks? It's exactly the. It's an animated statue. The statue that was always there of this tall, ten feet tall. Of a warrior. Statue. Yeah, and it was never uh, described as to what it was. It was just this man it's, facing and, west. And so, what is the? What does it look like now? Very regal, type. It, almost like a professorial man. Is he dressed from the same sort of time period as Strahd? I would say no. It's, uh, it was built in uh, Valachian times, I suppose. Um, but it's very, uh, it's very indiscernible. Okay. I, I, uh, I start yelling across to Born. Born, I feel like we, we just gotta prove ourselves here. I, I don't want to fight Strahd. Nor do I. But I want to try and save as many innocents as I can. Uh. All right, Strahd. And he looks back over and yells at him. 
Watch us take down this big giant piece of shit then. And I run through the crowd. Mm -hmm. I, I push my way through and then unleash two Eldritch Blast beams. Ooh. Nice. Now, my Eldritch Blast has been upgraded. I still shoot out two beams. Yep. But this time, when I hit a creature with Eldritch Blast, I can push the creature up to 10 feet away from me in a straight line. God. Very cool. It just says a creature, no size or anything. Okay. Okay, so my first Eldritch Blast. Uh, 14. It's a hit. Seven damage. Okay, number one, seven. You're fighting a construct, by the way. I should say. Uh, and I'm not... I, I'm just going to... that is. Cool. Yeah, what is a construct? No, don't tell me. We'll okay. find out. Okay. Okay. Is there anything behind it? Um, well, it stepped off of the fountain. Yeah, but is, there's no people behind it because I can choose to push it back 10 feet. Uh, there's a couple people behind it. Okay, then I'm not going to push it back. My second Eldritch Blast. It's four plus seven. It's a hit. Okay. Ten plus five is fifteen damage. Nice. Lauren, <laughs> not having any problems hitting this thing. It's Good. pretty big, I guess. Good for school, my men. The second blast hits it in its shoulder, uh, right where the where the shoulder ball would kind of connect to its neck, and all this uh, stone kind of crumbles off. Yeah, I got it right in the shoulder ball. <laughs> That's its weakness. <laughs> that <laughs> shoulder ball. I will let. <laughs> Keep an eye out, people. Out of the way. And Boren spins. His... You shove people out of the way. Yep. Boren, is it my turn? Yeah, your turn. Boren spins his axe in his hands like an umbrella. <laughs> Catches it and casts thunderous smite. So thunderous smite. Anytime I attack something uh, within 300 feet of me, there's a huge audible. Thunder Blast. And I can roll 2d6 of thunder damage, but also the creature has to roll a strength saving throw or okay. be pushed back 10 feet. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's attack this big boy. Come here, big boy. Well, blast. That's a hit. Eight. Yeah, that's, that's a hit. Big time. Beat. All right. That's come easy. here. Crack yeah, crack. I hit with a... Uh, 11. An 11. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Or a 12, yeah. Okay, so this is my first attack. 5 plus 7, 13. Plus oh, 9 thunder damage, so that's 22. Going for my extra attack. 19. Yeah, that's a hit. 2 plus 7, that's a 9. My thunder damage is 8, so 17. 17 plus 22 is uh, 39. And wow. it also fails the strength roll. Oh! I don't even know what your DC is, but it's a 1. So <laughs> not only do you completely <laughs> obliterate this thing with one hit, it shatters, but all of its bits smash backwards, and they blast backwards, hitting uh, a few people around. and, and, and uh, it's like smoldering rock just kind of land in the fountain as it gets... And Boren's ass is still crackling with thunder a bit. And that Whoa. thunder crack was loud. Wow. As you can see, Strahd's, pretty, to that Strahd's well. pretty amazed by this. And Boren turns around in the rain and looks at Strahd and goes, Lower your arms! And then and Wendell looks down at, at some scared person beside them cowering. Yeah beside him, and he goes, that's my friend, Born. <laughs> I say, you brought us here. We meant you no harm. And now you're mindlessly attacking. Yeah, and, and Wendell stands up beside him too, and he, and he goes, yeah, come on, what do you think about that? And Boren goes, don't be such an old man. Oh man, I'm just running Ooh. around Boren like a hype oh, man oh, right oh. now. Very impressive. He points to you, and he's launching a fireball your way. We're gonna, we're gonna dive. I'm gonna dive to the right. Yeah, you're gonna attempt to dive with a dexterity save. I'm gonna attempt save. to dive. Yeah, I'm gonna save. Oh, re-roll, 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 re-roll. Re re Ready? 
One, two, You'll three. take half damage if you're able to uh, avoid this. Fuck. No, neither of you are. With a dex check, 12? Nope. Oof. So as Strahd points to you guys, he launches this blazing fireball right down this crowd, incinerating tens of people before it finally hits you. You guys each take 23 fire damage. Good lord. Okay, that's like pretty much half my HP. At this point, uh, you start to see a whole bunch of ravens fly out of the blue water in, and they are lacing the skies, and they are diving down towards Strahd, towards all this chaos, towards all these bats that are ripping people to shreds. The, the ravens. ravens. We've got to help. Help the ravens. They helped us. Okay, how do we help the ravens? I don't know. Guards are starting to come in. Are they fighting? They're rich. Yeah, they're fighting. Okay. They're attacking the vampire spawn. How are they doing? And they're also, uh, shh, not very well. Shitty. They're doing shitty. And they're also trying to, they're basically almost at disadvantage because they're being swarmed by bats the whole time. Right. Okay, then we need, we need to help. Yeah, we need to help everybody. Um, Isaac is still hurling these flames at Strahd. Isaac hurls another flame and misses. So it's Wendell, yourself, and then uh, back to Strahd. Strahd just incinerated you guys. Right. He just incinerated us. Yeah, he hit you so, with a. So that's where we are in the initiative order. That's where you are, yeah. Okay, can but I? At this, but next round, uh, yeah. Ravens will start to uh, descend on him. Wendell's going to use his reaction to uh, being hit by Strahd's fireball. Okay. And he, and he No, he is going to point a finger at him, Ooh. and he's and Strahd is going to be surrounded by hellish flames. Ooh. And on a failed dexterity save, uh, take 4d10 damage. Ooh. Half as much on a fail, and he's got to beat 15. Yeah, he beats it. So 2d10. 1, 10, so 11. Takes 11. And as Wendell is pointing at him, and as he's surrounded by those flames, Wendell's like gritting his teeth, just angry at this guy. He's feeling like the surge of of the power that was given to him by whatever curse he's under, and he's he's feeling it. He's angry. Amazing. Okay, Boren, you get a turn. And that was Wendell's first strike against Strahd. Yes. You've wanted this for a while, boy! So he's, in, he's indulging Cheers a bit. this moment! Still pointing, <laughs> trying to get even more out of the flames. Boren wants to know what kind of a stage Strahd is standing on. Is it wood? Is it... It's a wooden scaffold. Okay. It was the one that was holding the... That was the, holding the wicker ball. The wicker ball. He ended up standing above it, and then he slashed the rope beneath him. Bourne wants to dash towards it. Just beeline straight towards it, where there's fire and smoldering everything around him. I want to take out... Okay, you make it there. I want to take out the scaffold so Strahd will come falling down. You're going to slash going, the wood? Yeah, I want to just slash the wood like super hard just to make it come. I down gave it an AC. Up. Just give it a to hit, and I gave it. Uh, I gave it some points. That's oh, a critical hit. Oh, there we go. That's what we want. Boren charges like a fucking Holy train shit. towards, and his axe is still crackling. He's still concentrating with his thunderous might. Amazing. And he runs. Thank you. And he brings his axe behind him. Yep. And then as he whips it to the left, he spins around and swipes. Right. So I gotta have you smash through the right leg of the scaffolding. Strahd, uh, Strahd falls with it to the ground. Nice. He's prone? What's that? So he's prone? Let me finish. As soon as he hits the ground. Uh, so he's prone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he is definitely prone. As you smash through that, you knock down the entire side. He falls with it. It just blows into splinters, this thing. And as soon as he hits the ground, um, he disappears. Oh. Okay, Born, so I still have a bonus action. Extra attack? Ah, oh, fuck. I don't know. Okay, Born goes, where'd he go? He looks around. Yeah, Wendell, he go? Wendell's running up. 
to him if he can. Mm -hmm. Unless anything else is happening. Nope. Okay. Wendell, be on your guard! There's still enemies about! You're each being uh, sized up by a vampire spawn on each side. Right from where they came from the wicker. Okay, so we're pretty much at the... F and, and, okay. You also have swarms of bats that are uh, threatening to attack you. The swarms of bats and two vampires, vampires on each of us. Yes. Vampire spawns. Vampire much, spawns. Much like Dora. And, uh, okay. and the ravens, how are they doing? The ravens have just flown down. As they were landing to the ground, they actually transformed to their hybrid yes. form. Yes. And now they're just stuck with you like, whoa, what What the hell happened? They oh, were so all, they're with us? They were, yeah, they were jumping down okay, to Okay, so we're Strahd. all by that scaffold where Strahd disappeared, yep. and and we're surrounded, in a, in a sense, by the vampire spawns and the bats, but we have the ravens and Isaac, too, with us. Isaac is with you. Okay. Let's roll initiative. You guys are on a confined area. Let's oh, roll initiative. Oh, rolling initiative. Yep. Very cool. Uh. Okay. You know, I like the way we did that without initiative, the first one, because it's just obvious. Yeah. yeah. It was just like, this is what's happening up. when. And we also, came, you guys naturally called your initiative. Came up, yeah, like, exactly. You're like, I'm doing this. Yeah. It's like, okay, so Jay's after Strahd. You know what? Like, I yeah. was yeah. actually going to attack okay. first, yeah. but you took it. Then I went, You okay, literally I'm initiated it. Yeah. It was great. And right yeah. here is good for you to call roll initiative. This too. is a legitimate battle, yeah. I got a 13. Okay, Isaac is going to be ahead of you guys. Born, how did you do? I got a 20. Okay, no. You'll beat Isaac for sure. And let me get in on these bats. Yep. Okay, so it's going to go boring. You're first. You're being swarmed by 10, 20 bats. They're all fighting away at you. Uh, dive bombing, swooping, nipping at you. Um, and there's also a, a vampire spawn. Yeah, I'm going to go. Speedy red eyes right in front of you. Yeah, I now have a silver weapon. Uh, and I'm excellent. That that works necessary, against, right? Um, I can also. Yep, there'll uh, be no immunities uh, in place. That's for sure. Right. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so Boren's gonna light his axe on fire and cast Branding Smite. Okay. Which uh, does an extra two d six radiant damage. Ooh. Uh, Rare form of damage. And he goes straight up, right to the vampire spawn and says. I've seen those eyes before. <laughs> this is coming straight for ya. This is at you. Woo. 15 plus 8, so yep. 23, okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm also gonna... Uh, so I'm gonna roll one this plus 2d6, so it's radiant damage. Uh, and, and yeah, I'm also gonna divine smite that. Okay. Oh, awesome. So uh, what that means is... Crap, I don't have my thing. What does that mean again, Tom? What do I do? So, Divine Smite. And I'm going to use it as a second level spell slot. Yep. So, starting at second level. So, you're using a second level spot. So, in addition to the weapon's damage, uh, you deal radiant damage. The extra damage is 2d8 for a first level spell. 1d8 for higher than that. So, th an additional 3d8. Additional 3d8. Yeah, plus my 2d6 that. of radiant damage. So, you're doing Branding Smite and... Yeah, I'm doubling them up because I don't have to concentrate with the divine smite, right? That's just a passive ability that I have. Love it. And I go, I look at him straight in his red beady eyes, and I go, five, eleven, uh, and then fourteen plus my slashy twenty-one. Oh, it lets us this hiss. <laughs> Spin my axe around. Nice right. one, Born. Extra attack. You've done it before. Do it again. Fifteen plus eight. Hit. Put me yeah, great. Now I can't divine smite that, but I can just attack this bugger. Three plus seven is ten. Nice backhand, Born. Hey, give it a little extra. <sighs> and it is vicious. It is very pissed off. It's gonna take two claws right back at you. And Bo who's Born paired up with, or is he on his own? Born's on his own right okay. now. Uh, there's a few ravens coming. Uh, where ravens come in? Coming okay. in. Okay. But uh, he's on his own. He's swarmed by a, a swarm of bats and by 
a vampire spawn. Oh, jeez. Okay, Born, you're in trouble. Okay. <sighs> so I, your AC is 20, right? That's right. I think you already know that. Yeah, so one, uh, the vampire takes two claws at you, the spawn. One of them hits. <laughs> Dealing uh, nine points of damage. That was smart! The vampire spawn is going to take a swipe at... He's looking at uh, you and Isaac. Uh, this this be... is the same vampire spawn? Well, they have the same initiative. Oh, oh I'm so, putting so all the, the one, spawn together. But so the other vampire spawn... The other that's spawn, with me. The one, Yeah, the vampire spawn is that's attacking with you me. Okay. is attacking you or Isaac. Okay, okay. Isaac. It's attacking Isaac. Okay. It's going to take two claws at him. Uh, both of them are actually horrible misses. So as it claws at Isaac, he kind of deflects him with his giant arm. And Wendell, it's your turn. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, Isaac fended off that uh, piece of shit. And now Wendell is going to Eldritch Blast. And he's going to try to blast. Ooh, that's only a, uh, a 10 to hit to the vampire spawn. Okay, the second blast, though. Is a 13 plus 7, which is a 20 total. It's a hit. Yeah. And he's going to roll. It's going to be a 10. And so that's 10 damage. Yep. And he pushes yep. it 10 feet away. I'm going to push it away from, just away from uh, Isaac and myself. Nice. And Pretty I cool. give Isaac a little wink. Because <laughs> <laughs> you wink back. Okay. All right. Really speak a lot. So now there's uh, now these bats are gonna swarm in on both of you. Uh, the first bat is gonna take a dive on you, Boren. That is a big miss. Boren hits it away with his shield. Oh my God! Critical on uh, Wendell. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my God. Uh, 17 points of damage. So these bats are swarming around Wendell, nipping his neck. These guys got you pretty good on the second round. Wendell's pretty much like on one knee, like very, very close to being knocked unconscious. Is it still raining? It is raining. It is miserable. It is thunderous. So Wendell's just Born dropped his turn. his knee to the mud, and he's just hearing the rain just smack against the puddles in the mud. Hearing these swarms of bats, it just what? Like, how did it attack me? Like, they just sort of nipped at me. <laughs> they started biting at your neck and everything. Oh, it's God. like um, so they took some, some yeah, almost like a hive of, of bees, away. like a like a beard of bees. I'm bleeding from different parts of my body. My my robes are just tattered. They're so tattered. Yeah, they are like literally flying through holes in your robes. But your um, cloak of protection looks pretty good. Boren's turn? Yes. Boren casts protection from good and evil. Okay. Disadvantage? What does that do? This protection grants me several benefits. Creatures of the type of aberration, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Mm -hmm. They all have disadvantage on attack rolls against me. Okay. I also can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. Which I don't think you can anyways, because yeah. of your aura of uh, protection. So Jay, I, I should say you're, you're within the aura of protection. Yeah, okay. Right. Right. Um, that should grant you some advantage on uh, saving throws. So it's a verbal, somatic, and material. So Amazing. What does it look water. like, dude? So I take out holy water from my belt, clip up the other side, take out some powdered silver, splash them together, and say... Muradin, may the evil plight stay back tonight! And I pound my fist into the ground and then I light up. And so that's done. What I'd like to do as my bonus action and movement mm -hmm. is dash towards... Is that, the, is that an opportunity attack? Absolutely. Okay. But they get disadvantage now. Awesome. Kind of smart. I mean, cool. I you got awesome. AC20, so... Fucking goddamn right. right. So they're going to take some swipes at you, both of them. And miss and miss. Well, I, even the highest roll would have. Yeah. So those are they. They're all. Those bats are like 
busting their nose off your goddamn armor. Right. <laughs> Wendell kind of sees this as he kind of lifts his head up from his two sort of, huge misses, and he now. sees these guys just kind of like going after Born as he's running towards me. You yeah. let me know if I can do this mm -hmm. as a bonus action. Put my hands on Wendell. Use a lay on hands. Lay on hands is not a bonus action. <laughs> it's a valiant attempt. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't do that? Can't no. use it as a bonus action? No. It's not possible. I still just do it. I hold window. But you hold... Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you can touch you. him, for sure. I'm here for you, buddy. It's awesome, man. So I hunker down with him and just hold a, hold my shield over him, over his body in yep. the rain. I got you, boy. Yeah. Feels good, man. He feels good. Great. And I kiss him. <laughs> awesome, man. He feels really good. <laughs> that's great. All right. I guess that's, oh, that's all I can do. That's your turn, okay. That's my the, turn. The uh, vampire spawn, or sorry, um, yeah, vampire spawn. I'm gonna take, take a. So you're you're out of range, actually. You made it out of range. That's cool. They're gonna move. One's gonna move towards you. Take a couple swipes. Uh, uh, one is a hit. Still with disadvantage. This duration. Oh yeah, it's fucking. Is up to ten minutes. Ah, oh, they're both misses, man. That is amazing. The AC twenty with disadvantage. Who just attacked him? Uh, vampire. So you're completely unhittable right now. Now a vampire is going to take a swipe at either you or Isaac. Uh, it goes after you. Oh, this is not good, really. Wait a second, where did the vampire go for us? Didn't we have a vampire and a bat swan too? Oh, he got pushed away, 10 feet. So the one you half pushed back. Half of his back. movement would have been, wait a sec, half of his movement would have been getting, did, was he pushed back and knocked prone? Okay, so he does walk up and take two swipes against you. This could not. This could be bad. Okay. Okay, one definitely hits. Um, so I'm I'm gonna be down. I think so. One d6 plus three. Wait a second. Wait a second. One d6 plus three. I'm gonna use my shield. Do you? As a reaction? Well. Uh, yeah, I can use it as a reaction. It'll just give me plus five to my AC. Won't do it. Roll the 19. Maybe I won't use my shield. Do you have anything else? Anything in your bag of tricks? If, if it wasn't a 19, that would have been awesome. Wendell, I can only do so much. Anything else in your bag of tricks? You have How many hit points do you have? Six. Okay, so you have a 1d6 plus three. Wait a minute. Okay. And, yeah. One willing creature you touch is protected against certain types of people. If I'm touching Wendell, which I already set up, does that you, mean these you attacks cast it now on are yourself? You don't cast it on multiple people. All right. Just, just you could recast yeah. it when it's your turn next turn. All right, just just check. So Here's let's just do one of these. <laughs> yeah. D six plus three. You have six. Mm hmm So less than fifty percent. Oh. Yikes. Okay, you so are that was a six plus three. So That's nine cool. damage will take me to minus three. Zone. Yeah. My whole face just smacks into the mud. Oh. And a little bit of like muddy water starts going into my mouth. As Isaac sees you fall, he conjures this ball of flame and hurls it at this vampire spawn. The spawn screeches engulfed in flames. It is incinerated. Is there any area of, area of effect happening with that? Good question, but no. Oh, wow. So you watch this spawn hit the ground in flames. Up next is a swarm of bats. The bats fly in against you. Bats fly in against Boren. Both, yep, both miss. Uh, the new bats flying against you as well. Disadvantage. Yep, both miss. Um. So, Boren, just before your turn, out of the corner, you see what's left of these people kind of scattering about, tripping over the, each other. This giant fucking tiger jumps out of the crowd and bites a saber tooth tiger a saber tooth tiger and this saber tooth tiger is wearing half plate oh! it's an armored fucking tiger this tiger jumps and lands a bite 
and bites this vampire spawn, tackling it to the ground and feasting upon it. It is dead and screeching. Oh my, what the living hell is going on? Orin looks down at his friend. He wants to check his friend. Check. But I, I want to uh, use my. Who, who's still? Uh, I, 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 who's I, I, still fighting Boren? So out of all this chaos, I should still add there are all these guards and people being shredded by like when when these bats are coming upon the citizens, they're killing them with every attack. Yeah. There's yeah. no AC. Of there's course. no hit points. Yeah. They're biting them. They're destroying them. There's a, still a few vampire spawn left that are fighting the were ravens. Basically, you're in this mishmash of land where there's some guards left. Not many. There's very few people left. They've kind of scattered all about. Not really useful people. And um, there are some were ravens also being attacked. And you kind of actually have this little break right now where you are being circled by. Uh, it's like saving so Private be, Ryan. Sorry, you are being circled by bats, but Isaac is with you, and he's very, very strong. Right. Wendell's on the ground. There's this moment as uh, the rain's coming, pouring down upon you. You have a moment. You've almost knocked yourself out of initiative. You know what I'm trying to say? There will be bats attacking you, but they're at disadvantage. You have 20 AC. Right. They might be flying off to different people. They're picking their battles. This is what Boren does. Picks up the body of his friend. Just picks it up. And he wants to run to the Blue Water Inn to get some sort of shelter. So you pick him up, and you're bumping through people. The saber-toothed tiger is ripping this vampire spawn to shred. Shreds. There's still these battles going on between these were-ravens and what's left of the vampire spawn. Orin is using every moment of attack to just use it as a... As a uh, uh, distraction. Just to yep. You still have your protection on. You're running through the chaos. No problem. You pick up Boren with your 20 strength. Or you pick up Wendell with your 20 strength. No problem. You're barging way through uh, to the Blue Water Inn. You get to the door. You kick it open. And uh, <laughs> I put him down gently. And I, I'm on one knee. Boren's on one knee with Wendell. Looking around. What does he see? It's empty. All you see is some bloody footprints. Where do they lead? They lead up the stairs. Oh, Christ. He picks up Wendell. Yep. Goes up the stairs. Take him up the, the stairs. Yeah. Yep, you curl around. It leads to right in front of where the secret panel is. Oh, no. He goes... He kicks open the door of their room that they stayed in before, yep. that they're allowed. He puts mm -hmm. Wendell on the bed. Yep, there's some uh, you, uh, wolf, wolf pelts, Great. wolf skin pelts. Covers them. All right, look, I want to use a medicine check. I want to make sure that he's he's out. I remember having done this from last time. I want to make sure that... <laughs> yeah, see if you can stabilize him. Yeah. it's a good point. We weren't really doing death rolls, but... <coughs> completely, completely stabilized. Rolled. You're a military man. I'm a military yeah. man. I check him. I oh. medic man. Oh. I see. Morn. Wendell, can you hear me? I'm not doing so hot. Wendell, I'm going to ask you this, and I'm going to be okay. very serious. Go back in a second. So you've... Brought him to zero HP. Okay. And okay. now you've laid hands on him? Well, I want to say this. Because he's not can, awake right now. Can he hear me? No. All right. If you're stabilized, you're at zero. You're just not going below zero. But zero means I can't talk? I'm, I'm out still? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're just, you're breathing. Okay. You're, you haven't done any death uh, saves. I mean, we, we could have made you roll for those, I guess. We probably should have. As soon as I was out, we dropped out of initiative, though. Yeah. So he would have tried to stabilize you right it's okay. away. I, I it would have happened. Yeah, it would have happened. It was, it's inevitable. Yeah, so Wendell is stabilized. Uh, you put your hand on his uh, neck. You can feel that he has a pulse right. and he's breathing, but, but he's he totally out of it. He cannot hear you. Bourne has this dilemma right now. And I say this truthfully, that he doesn't know whether to bring his friend back or not. He's heard the words that he saw. He heard. Bourne has heard his friend talk about death, leaving it behind, wanting to go home. Wanting not to be here. There's a real dilemma going. This guy's here. He's got zero HP. Should I use lay on hands? Bring him back to life? Should I leave him here and go follow those footprints? Do you want to roll for it? Do 
If I leave him here, he's stabilized. He's good. He won't die. He won't die. No. In fact, after a long rest, he'll probably regain an HP. He'll come to. I'm going to cover him. Cover him with wolf pelts. Mm -hmm. No. No, you know what? Fuck it. He's going to bring him back. He could use his help. I like the I like the struggle. He rubs his hands together. He goes, "When well, no, I'm so sorry. Please know that I'm only doing this for myself. This is a selfish reason, but I need you. I need you right now. I need your help. Come back to me." And he puts his hands on Wendell's chest. So you're yeah, level okay. seven times five, I think. Thirty-five points. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you give him the full lay on hands? Full lay on hands. So Wendell fucking <laughs> gasps for life. In the room, he's kind of disoriented. Like, oh my god, did we just have a nightmare? I'm in my bed. This is fucked up. 35 uh, uh, HP. What happened? You're right. You're right. I'm sorry, boy. I had to bring you back. How do you feel? Uh, can you move? Yeah, I can move. I shrug him off. I give him like the dirtiest look. I look him right in the eyes and I go, Windrill. I know this. I'm looking away. Moment. I'm looking away from him. I say, Windrill. I know I you turn want my body to die. over. And I contemplated it for a moment. I almost gave you what you want. But I was selfish. I brought you back for me, boy. I am sorry. But I need you now. I need you more than I ever needed you before. I rely on you. Wendell's just looking at the wall, pretty much. However, yeah. however much darkness you feel in this place, you're my guiding light. That's what I need to do. And as he hears Bourne's voice, he, he's having this memory of Strahd firing these fireballs out, being burned by it, and seeing him all confident standing on the scaffold. And Wendell's eyes are just wide scared and shaking and he's he doesn't feel so good can you help me Irina is in trouble there's footprints you got knocked out back there I picked you up it's chaos outside son but Irina's in trouble perhaps we could save her we're safe now Born. I'm worried we're gonna we're going to be just like all the other adventurers that all the Barovian folk talk about. And some next adventurers are going to come through here and they're going to tell our story about how we stepped to Strahd. I got knocked out by just one of his spawn. This is or was it the bats? It was a spawn. I saw it. Yep, yep, yep. yep. You heard Strahd. He said, show me what you got. And we well, showed him, boy. <laughs> you did good out there. I, look at me, born. I'm bedridden. Look at me, Wendell. And I turn around. I, tur I flop my body around. And I'm looking at born. I'm just drenched. I'm covered in blood. And I just stand there with my axe like a soldier. My mission is to get you home. That is my main goal now. If you must know it, then know it true. But I'm doing this for you. I, I don't understand, Boren. What do you mean you're doing this for me? I'm making sure that you get home. Boren, I, I, I don't even have a home. This is a great moment of uh, half-elf and dwarven diplomacy. Two unlikely friends. United. It's beautiful. Wendell gets up and, like, is there still a... You followed bloody footprints in here? Yeah, the bloody, bloody footprints... Bloody footprints lead... up the stairs, but they led to the hidden entrance. You haven't oh. followed the footsteps okay. yet. Okay, so I... Uh... Follow me. So I lead him out towards where the secret entrance is. Mm -hmm. And we go down. We you go slide down it open. What's, Born, what's going on out there? 
did the... Did, did you take care of him? You remember that saber-toothed tiger? Yeah. That appeared out of nowhere. It started attacking Come the vampire on. spawn. It was covered in armor. What? Retavio might be better suited as an ally rather than someone to mistrust. He saved us. Oh, saber tooth tiger. Did. Shit. A saber tooth tiger? What? It was fighting alongside the it keepers and, came out of and you and I. It out and then it started ripping out and eating one of these vampire spawn. It was amazing, man. Oh, man. I wish you. You missed so many things. Man. What? Well, what, what happened? What happened in the end? Well, I don't know. I saw you. I picked you up and I brought you right inside. So, is it literally minutes ago? Holy shit! Oh, is, are shh, they still? Voice out. Are they still fighting out there? Come on. Shh, shh, shh. Let me hear. You almost hear like a pang in your ear. That's uh, so painful. Uh, you hear the screams of almost like thousands, thousands. You hear a sound so soul crushing that you can't even believe what you're hearing, and it brings you down to a knee. Uh, it's like a ringing in your ear. Oh, it's like tinnitus times a thousand. You're late. Uh, What's got you? The ringing. Oh, I can't stop it. It's so loud and so awful. You got to keep it down. There might be someone uh, down here. Uh, sounds like screaming. Fuck. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's a, That's exactly how bad it is. It's a bloodbath out there. Oh. Try not to concentrate on it. Uh, it sounds like a bloodbath in my fucking head. Let's keep moving. So as you guys uh, follow the Wendell. bloody footprints down to Irina's bedroom, wobbles. You get down there. Wendell's grabbing his ear, kind of s- stumbling into the room, and it's empty. And there's no Irina. Oh shit! Where's Irina? Oh. I look at the footprints. Do I see them on a? Are they recognizable? Have I seen these things? Uh, they're it? human footprints. Uh, Are they bare feet? You Wendell do, gets you down. Do, and you can do a survival check. Looks at them with the seven roll for investigation. Survival? Wouldn't it be inve- yeah, investigation or survival? Uh, survival is actually more for footprints. Okay. For like tracking people and stuff like that. So they were... You can Twelve. Tell, aren't these footprints? So they were wearing uh, <laughs> yeah, boots of sort. Well, you were asking if they were like barefoot. Oh, okay. So boots. Two feet. Humanoid. Boots. And does she have any footprints? Did she leave any or just the boot footprints? Just the boot footprints. There's not, like, double footprints going up the stairs. Damn it. Boris is flipping over the bed and all the stuff in there. There's nothing there? No. A little bit of blood on the ground. Damn it! Winder, what do you surmise? Someone's come in. They've taken a... Strahd. Right. He must have taken her. But he couldn't have. Right. Unless he had some sort of uh, teleportation thing. I've got something like that. You do? That's great. What we use below the death house. He could have just gotten away from us just a little bit, just enough. We should have made we should have made it right for our arena as soon as we saw things getting hairy. You're right. Born turns around. I'm just going to run b- right back up the stairs. Boren just wants to run right back up okay. the stairs. Yep, see. you run back up. Okay. Wendell's going to fall around. You Chaos can get outside. back downstairs. As soon as you get down to uh, the front of the door, all of a sudden it smashes open. And uh, you see your, you see Rictavio. Oh, my God. Rictavio! <laughs> Rictavio! Uh, I can't believe you guys are okay. This is amazing. Oh. oh, my God. Do you guys see what happened out there? Hey, my did. tiger. I sent my tiger upon <laughs> the people there. Oh, my God. Thank you. It saved us. Wait a second, Rictavio. You sent your tiger upon the people? Well, I sent it upon uh, the vampire spawn attacking okay, you. Okay, okay, okay. It's a very well-trained tiger. I'm not sure it's doing so well right now. Guys. Well, uh, you saved our lives, so thank you, sir. Yeah. We owe you one. I heard that was... I'm sorry, I missed that. May the beard of Morden bless and keep you protected for the rest of your days. Hmm, yes, I, I think we'll need more than that. Uh, if you look outside, well, things have gotten really bad. Uh, we need to grab my horse from, beha- be- from behind the stables here, and I suggest we get to my wagon and uh, get the heck out of my lackey. Is that bad? Oh, it, it, so th- no, this, no, no. this battle is still happening right now? Oh, it's happening. Take a look. 
and he just peers. He opens up the door a crack, and when you look outside, you see flames everywhere, and you also see Rahadin. He's in the center of the stage, and he's screaming, and it's this pang in your ears, the screams of a thousand souls, and within his radius, people are just dropping like flies. God. So this is what I've been hearing. This is what you've been hearing. You've been sensing him. Oh my God. And is it, is it like the sort of thing where if I get closer, I can hear it more or something? Is that, you're saying people around yes. him are dropping, so it's... It's in like a 10-foot radius. Oh my God. It's just like a... And then people are just hitting the ground. Wendell looks at Adam at Rectavio. Oh, and just so you know, our friend Erwin, he is uh, no longer with us. <laughs> oh my oh, God. This is terrible. All right, yeah, Rectavio, let's go. Let's get on your, your okay, carriage and go. follow me. I know, uh, get out of here. I know a uh, passageway to the uh, to the stables. Really Come quickly, on. I want to roll an insight check to see if he's yep. telling the truth. 11 plus 5, 16. You feel good. You feel like this is a, a tiny light of sunshine Amazing. in a very Great. dismal Come time. Come on, Let's, let's go. go. Sorry. Uh, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> he bursts out the door. You see Rahadin just like slaying people left and right. Boren wraps his arm around Wendell's waist. Come on, come on. You're starting to hear a little pang in your ears as well. Uh, yeah, it take a while to get used to that. Follow me. So he heads east all the way to the stockyards. He grabs his horse from the stables. He starts to equip the horse. He, okay. he, he, he attaches it to, uh, to the wagon. Yes. What's, what's the plan here? So you're putting together this horse and Oh, carriage. we got that half holiday. This city is completely toast. Okay, okay, that is clear. I can hear that going on. So what, how are we going to get out of here? We just make a run for it? Are we in the clear? We're in the clear if we head out east. As okay. long as we're away from the square. Where's our destination? So as you make your way uh, east towards the stockyards on the outskirts of the city from whence you came, the center of this insanity of this town square is kind of spreading like wildfire but you are outside of it at this point your only way out is there's not even guards that they're posted at this point but your only way out is uh through the exit of from whence you came to the east and uh you can break right through you have rectavio you have his horse his mare the gray mare which was uh in the raven loft oh cool and um you guys are just busting out east, away from this okay. chaos. There's yeah, no, we're gonna we're gonna that. Yeah. no direct we're, plan. We're riding in, this uh, wagon. Going to get the fuck out of here and in a quick, uh, fast way. Yes. We do that. So you yes. do that. You guys bust out through the gates. You're heading down the Spalic roads. Um, I guess we hear the, the battle sounds just get quieter and quieter okay. behind us. And now we're just hearing oh, yeah. the we look back that and carriage go. You see black smoke. Ugh. You see flames even. And it's turning dark now, right? Oh yeah. It's, I mean it's it's right, nighttime. Yeah. It's, okay. These uh these these lights are So we're looking back at, at Velaki <laughs> lost. Just being just... Yeah, Velaki is Gone. completely scorched. I, t- I share it's spreading. Wendell shares a look with Boren just like we're in the back of this wagon. It's just bouncing, it's bouncing. We're holding on, just yeah. looking at it. It's this nighttime, thing. you yeah, exactly. Wendell Wendell looks down at his feed a little bit as he's sort of just like I guess he's curled up there but he, he has a sense of like letting the city down in a sense like he had he had hopes to brashly sort of restore order but then he got his ego just handed to him with, after that Strahd encounter Borin just sits down closes his eyes and just starts to breathe and Shake his head no, like all over again. We've gotten so far, but we've fallen so far backwards now. Going back to where we came. Rick Tapio is even a little oddly emotional. Hmm. I love that tiger. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope it. Think there's any chance it'll come back, guys? Do I think there's any chance your tiger will come back? Yeah. Octavio. I I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know, Octavio. Well, I'm not sure if it was lost in the battle or just ran away. 
good to see. I think it probably you. ran away, guys. Yeah. 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 Maybe I think it ran away. I think so, too. I yeah, think it'll it be did. back. <laughs> you know how to find yeah. me. Yeah. Well, you're a very positive guy. Hmm. And that's coming from an extremely positive guy. And Rictavio, I know that I said to you back when we met in the bar that I, well, I didn't trust you. And, well, I owe you an apology because you, uh, you took the time to, to take Born and I to safety when the whole city was falling apart. Apology accepted, my friend. I, uh, I think you guys are... You guys might be the guys. <laughs> I think you stand a chance. <sighs> guys I'm for what? Stand a chance uh, against who? Hmm. Well. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> stand a chance against uh, freeing us from this place, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're a strange little guy. Eh? He's a man alone. He's a bit of a uh, He's a strange guy. He's a bit of a strange guy. Look, look uh, maybe I think you're strange. I bet you do. Uh, it's all relative, so I must be the biggest weirdo you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at this. He's twirling around. He's got his hips going. Born, look at this guy. Mm-hmm. Look at this uh, guy. Uh, onward into the night, my friends. <laughs> uh, He's an entertainer. Yes. Uh, suppose we mm. shouldn't be so light on our feet after such a... Uh, well, the city of Valaki is gone. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, Boren. I know you like that positivity. Uh, I have My friends. To... What? Tell me where you need to go. I will bring you there. But I can't stay with you. Why not? Where do you need to go? Okay. Well, there's many places we need to go. Might be a while, though. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Wendell? Up to Lake Zarovich. Zarovich, yeah. How far away are we from Lake Zarovich? Hmm, not too far at all. There's a couple entrances. Yeah. So I think that's the closest thing, according to this map. But also, how far away is Krezik from here? Oh, I can take you there. We might take a roundabout route, but I can bring you there. What do you think? Well, in order to get to Krezik, we have to go back the direction of the city or That's around right. it or something, so we might as well go check out this uh, Lake Zarovic for Whatever this missing you, child. Whatever route you need, I will find you. All right. Let's hit up Lake Zarovic since we're close. First. We'll hit it up. We'll hit it up. Yeah. Hardcore. Hey. Hit it with our hammer. You know what? It's good because even though the well, the city of Alaki is fallen, but since we do have a job to do, it's important that we keep uh, you know, an attitude of laissez-faire. Wow. I'm just saying, Boren, that I find it easier to cope with this place if I just sort of treat it like easy come, easy go. Well, it seems to be that we. It certainly seems to be that we. All right. To the lake, Rictavio. Maybe Born might need a little nap on the way. I, I've spent a lot of energy. <laughs> he thunder is smiting things and chopping an entire stand in half. I, I faced our enemy. I taunted our enemy, and I lived to fight another day. If you don't mind, boys. Can curl up here, back of this wig, and give myself a little sleepy bitty time. We'll wake you when we get to Zar- Lake Zarvich. And Wendell sort of Boy, just out, takes his little spot in the carriage too, and curls up and puts puts his tattered robes over his exposed knees. And so you yeah, you bounce along into the night, a couple hours go past without any notice and uh, Rick Tavio gives you a little shake and tells you uh, that it's time for you guys to part ways but that he's taking you to the foot of the lake and he says uh, perhaps I'll see you again and he opens up his coat and he hands you a wooden stake and he says maybe this will help you along your way here are a couple uh, tarps he gives you guys. 
something to make a tent out of, and a couple bed rolls. Where are you off to, friend? I work alone. Pleasure. Indeed. Thank you for the ride. Do All you right, go? Octavio. Before you leave, I must ask. Do you know if we can still count on the ravens? Is the Order of the Feather still working? Funny you say that. I was coming to Vallaki to learn more about them myself. Hard to say how many survived what I saw. I certainly hope so. I was counting on them myself. Aye. Well then, if we see any, we'll make sure to keep an eye on you. Please do. Thank and you for your likewise. Help. Of course. See you around, I hope. Me too. Heps back on the the wagon. <laughs> 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 he plays his hand a little in the air. You guys are right at the foot, surrounded by woods, at the foot of uh, Lake Zarlik. I look around, I just want to look around. What do I see around here? How do I feel? It's just very, very silent. You can f- see the uh, the shores of this lake kind of coming up. It's peaceful. It's big enough that you're able to see a twinkling of starlight uh, in the lake. It's very, very silent. You're actually at a peaceful moment, uh, which is vastly different from the chaos that you saw. And can actually really still hear if you really, really focus. And you're just kind of holding this wooden stake that Rictavio gave you. Well, this will come in very handy. Born puts it away in his bag. I guess we should set up camp for the night. I think that there's... uh some of those Ustani that are around here looking for this Aragol child, right? Who knows? We don't know if their camp was burned down right outside the town. Yeah, but we know that when you went up to the... when we were up going to the Vistani camp... That's right. Some mentioned that they would be here. Because they... They heard that that's the last known whereabouts or something of Aragol. My word. Right? Or correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. That's no, no, that's yeah. totally right. You're being on, brother. Well, then we've come to the right place. So we gotta look for where they are. Indeed. Make sure they don't find us before we find them. I'll give you guys a little, like, piece of, uh, mind. So you guys have traveled all the way down here? Yeah. This is your entrance to Lake Zarovic. Mm-hmm. The Vistani on foot are probably came from their camp. Right, They're, They right. probably took this entrance, or maybe this The entrance. eastern, right, right, right. Well, we're so far You guys kind of surmise, because even... you guys traveled by horse through yeah. night. It's a huge lake. Since you saw that group of Vistani, you're probably assuming they're around one of these two paths. Okay. I don't think you... I think you can feel good over here. Yeah. And Wendell's facing the lake, and he steps up to the shoreline and takes in the peaceful vibe of it all. Born approaches Wendell. It's like, this never ends. This never bleeding ends. How you feeling? Uh, old man like me? Yeah, I'm feeling like it never ends too, Born. Boren just instinctually starts setting up camp. He takes the tarps that Rictavio threw him, and sets it up. He's being a military man. He knows how to go through this. He just sets up his tent. It's a nice good space. Starts to build a fire. And Wendell lights up a little dwarven moss. Yeah. And stands. Puts his, his, his kind of hurt feet into the shore water. Mm. Just up to his ankles. And they just have this quiet this time, time of... I guess thinking about a whole town lost, Irina missing. Boren does this thing where he slides a panel off his axe, puts it on the open fire, and throws the stakes of the wolves on. He starts using bits of metal from his axe as like a pan or a grilling station. And while Wendell's waiting in the water, 
cool water around in boards, just cooking them. Cooking them food. This concludes another episode of Dwarven Moss. If you'd like to support us, consider joining our Patreon or buy us a coffee. Leave us a comment or question and we'll try to get to it on one of our episodes of Talking Moss. Dwarven Moss is presented by the Sonar Network. <laughs>